is we'll go ahead and open this little preview button here and we'll just go ahead and do a quick simulation just to see how it looks right off the bat. Well first let's let's go ahead and turn off smoke because we don't want to uh, simulate the smoke so I'm going to go to simulation tab now and we're going to turn off simulate smoke this way it only does the fire so we can for this tutorial we'll just work on the one thing at a time alright so let's go ahead and click the little simulate button right here start simulation and you'll see we have somewhat of a little fire going on there this is basically a flat fire with a little bit of uh, you know um, wigglies to it I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see nothing crazy nothing fancy or anything just a standard like a little 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 cheesy fire render that out just so you can see nothing special yet right just a flat no there's no texture we don't have nothing added to it let me zoom in a little bit more so we just see it better for in the preview. I want to see it a little bit bigger. That should work. All right, so that's that. And let's go ahead and we'll bring this up now. I'm going to select a little simple source, and I'll simulate it like that just so you can see. Play it. See now it's you can see the bottom of the little simple source object. So it depends on what you want. When I brought it down before, it was just cut. It was cutting off the uh, bottom half and coming out, you know, at, at, out of the sides, you know, the middle and then up. So, really, doesn't matter. It's just I'm just showing you how things get cut off and stuff. So you can see how it gets cut off there. All right, so there, that's you know, that shows you we got the little fire going. It's nothing crazy, and I'm sure you're not excited about that yet. Uh, hopefully, we'll make something cool here. Alright, so what we want to do is, um, let's see, to make this wiggly and, you know, do something, we could, here, let me just change my burn rate here. I'm going to show you what my burn rate is, what this is going to do. If we want the fire to kind of go burn a little bit longer, we can tweak this down here, and we'll simulate it. and you'll see how the fire kind of shoots out and burns longer, it gets like a longer kind of fire, a longer flow. You know, that's one way of getting flow to go a little bit higher and, and more flowier. Um, we'll just go ahead and simulate that, that should work. You know, that's like that's one thing. There's one burn rate that you're gonna you're gonna mess with the burn rate. You're gonna mess with the expansion. Um, just trying to figure out what we should do next here. To um, all right, first of all, let's go ahead and go to the object source here. All right, basically our fire is being driven by velocity right now and temperature, of course. But we won't work on smoke. All right, fuel. We go to the object source. We have our fuel thing here. Fuel is what kind of this simple source is getting filled up with fuel. So if we turn fuel off, by default it's 100. If we turned it off, there's not going to be any fuel in this in the simple source. So no fire is going to be generated. All right. So what we're going to do is you leave it at 100 so we get all the fuel. The whole thing gets filled up with fuel this way and we have the temperature now so we're going to get the fire. All right. If we drop the temperature, let's drop it to like 15, okay, we're not going to get any fire. Now, the reason why we don't get any fire is because we only have our temperature set to 15. And under simulation, our ignition temperature is set to 100. So, as the fuel fills up and the temperature rises, if we don't have the temperature in there, we're not going to get any fire if we don't if it's not equal to 100 or greater it's not going to be any fire so like say if we drop this down to 5 now we should get some kind of a fire here because now our temp our ignition temperature is set lower than the object's temperature okay so keep that in mind when you're uh, playing things later on in other tutorials we'll go on and I'll show you how to utilize the temperature to make some pretty neat effects 
but for now it's just I'm just showing you what the temperature works and this ignition and all that stuff is all right so let's just set this to we'll just set the temperature to zero just so it ignites right away and uh, you know so we don't there's no wait in time it's just gonna go up and ignite all right and then for my temperature I'm just gonna we'll just set it I guess we'll go something high to start with because right now I'm gonna just want to work on my flow here we're not gonna go for quality yet we just want to get some kinda you know the the correct flow that we're looking for so let's just set it to like 800 or so and we'll simulate that and show you what happens here okay you can see the fires rising higher now because it is a hotter fire so it's gonna rise a lot higher now and maybe faster so you can see it's it's definitely going faster and it slows down from the other simulation okay so that's that's kind of what we want we want to get the fire to c I want the fire a little higher now for you know the particular fire that I'm trying to do here all right so that's one thing um, now velocity you have your objects directional directional means like you crank this up it's gonna shoot it out the direction of the directional uh, icon so now if we go ahead and you know you'll see it it's coming out a lot harder and it's being shot up in the air you know it's good for certain things that's what your directional does if you need you know not really a flamethrower flamethrower might be better with the uh, particles but uh, you know it gives you an idea of what that is for now radial we'll go ahead and I'll just crank that up to a wild number and show you radial just means it's kind of expanding being forced out you know in a radial fashion you can see it's spread out now which could be used for you know certain things to make your fire fatter if it's if you don't want the fire coming to a point or whatever so that's one guess what we can leave that well let's just set it to zero because I don't want my fire driven by velocity right now um, you know the another tutorial we can go on to using the velocity and animating it over time because you know you basically you can use the velocity uh, to drive your fire in the beginning to shoot it out and then maybe we can kink it back a little bit to zero so like our wind and turbulence uh, adjust the fire so you know there's just so many different things by animating all these different settings you can get some really crazy effects but I'm just trying to get you to see what all these little things do and there's so many it's really hard to uh, uh, figure out what I want to do first here I'm going to increase the size of my um, my which we call simple source 15 just one a little bit bigger all right so now we have nothing driving the fire but basically temperature and that should be it and that's what I want I just want the really you know a nice gushy kind of fire and as you can see everything velocity and all that's turned down to zero uh, your turbulence down here is when you have this driven driving your fire your velocity of the turbulence by adjusting the turbulence it'll kind of f affect the way you know it'll just add some turbulence to the velocity so you know you'd have to play with that to see what that one does I'm not going to go into it with this tutorial because uh, that's not the kind of fire I'm working with I'm basically just working with a nice fire that flows up we're gonna sort of do like some kind of wild torchy looking uh, fire that's kind of what's in my head right now for this one all right so all right we got our temperature up to 800 now the reason why it's going up like this you know the buoyancy you can see how it kind of bubbles up like that if we turn our buoyancy down now because buoyancy is what's making it rise turn it down to zero and we'll go ahead and simulate it now there's no buoyancy so the kind of fire just kind of sits there all right so that's what's you know the temperature and buoyancy and gravity and all that kind of work on rising the fire so get your fire to a good temperature that you think it might it should be at and then adjust your buoyancy to get the flow upward that you want so you know let's let's just get a little above halfway we'll go to six I guess all right so now you know the fire is kind of it starts off gets that you know that little plume you kind of want the plume to start out and like I said I'm just going for the flow right 